Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Welcome to Holy Family Parish for the celebration of this Sunday, Holy Mass. Ladies, did you register for the 8th Annual In Mary's Footsteps Women's Conference being held on Saturday, March 12th at Good Shepherd Catholic Church in Chilton? And men, did you register for the Estovir Men's Conference on Saturday, March 19th at the Shrine of Our Lady of Good Help? For more information about both conferences, see the poster board in the narthex. The Lenten season is coming soon. If you would like to lead Stations of the Cross at 9 a.m. on a Friday or 5.30 p.m. on a Tuesday, please sign up on the sheet in the narthex. Please send in your Bishop's Appeal pledge card or give online at the Catholic Foundation website as soon as possible. Our goal is $60,302. As of February 15th, 11 donors have given $10,475. Help spread the good news throughout Northeast Wisconsin. There is a second collection today for the Education Endowment Fund. Each year, 5% of the Education Endowment Balance is distributed to help fund our school and faith formation program. The larger the balance, the larger the distribution. Thank you for your generosity. Love your enemies, Jesus tells us, challenging society's values and even common <clears throat> sense. Why should we love those who have hurt us? Well, one of the greatest gifts we can give is our mercy. We may feel that our enemy doesn't deserve our mercy, but it may help to realize it is God's mercy that we extend, that it's God's mercy that counts. Let us think of those who have wronged us and pray that we can be instrument, instruments of God's mercy in their lives. Our opening hymn is Lord, Whose Love in Humble Service, number 200 in the Missalette. Lord, here's loving, humble service for the weight of human need. Upon the cross forsaken, put your mercy's perfect deed. We are servants for the worship, not a Every gift which you impart, still your children wander homeless, still the hungry cry for bread, still the captives long for freedom, still in grief we mourn our death. As you Lord in deep compassion. Hear the sick and breathe the soul. By your spirit, send your power to our world to make it whole. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with Amen. you. With the Spirit. 
Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh and the splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, on earth peace, to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we We pray, Almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things we may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A 
reading from the first book of Samuel. In those days, Saul went down to the desert of Ziph with 3,000 picked men of Israel to search for David in the desert of Ziph. So David and Abishai went among Saul's soldiers by night and found Saul lying asleep within the barricade with his spear thrust into the ground at his head and Abner and his men sleeping around him. Abishai whispered to David, God has delivered your enemy into your grasp this day. Let me, let me nail him to the ground with one thrust of the spear. I will not need a second thrust. But David said to Abishai, Do not harm him, for who can lay hands on the Lord's anointed and remain unpunished? So David took the spear and the water jug from their place at Saul's head, and they got away without anyone seeing or knowing or awakening. All remained asleep because the Lord had put them into a deep slumber. Going across to an opposite slope, David stood in a remote hilltop at a great distance from Abner, son of Ner, and the troops. He said, Here is the king's spear. Let an attendant come over to get it. The Lord will re reward each man for his justice and faithfulness. Today, though the, Lord, though the Lord delivered you into my grasp, I would not harm the Lord's anointed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is number 75 in the gather. The Lord is kind and merciful. 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 Bless the Lord and forget not God's benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. God pardons all your iniquities and covers your sorrows, redeems your life from destruction, and crowns you with kindness. The Lord is God and merciful. The Lord is God and merciful. is a God, so to anger abiding in kindness. The Lord is kind and merciful. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, it is written, The first man, Adam, becoming a living being, the last Adam, a life-giving spirit. But the spiritual was not first, rather the natural and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, earthly. The second man from heaven. As was the earthly one, so also are the earthly. 
And as is the heavenly one, so also are the heavenly. Just as we have borne the image of the earthly one, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, to you who hear I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. To the person who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other one as well. And from the person who takes your cloak, do not withhold even your tunic. Give to everyone who asks of you, and from anyone who takes uh, what is yours, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. For if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. If you lend money to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners and get back the same amount. But rather, love your enemies and do good to them. And lend expecting nothing back. And then your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High. For he himself is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Stop judging and you will not be judged. Stop condemning and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and gifts will be given to you. Good measure, packed together, shaken down and overflowing, will be poured into your lap. For the measure with which you measure will be returned to be measured out to you. The Gospel of the Lord. We are Catholics. As Christians, we are called to follow Christ with our life as Jesus teaches. Which leads to the question, I think we all need to ask ourselves this, do I ever read Scripture with the sole intention asking, how should I actually live my life as a Christian? Do we ever think about how, how should my life as a Christian be different from those around us living in the world who aren't Christian? Is my life different at all from the person around us who's not Christian? Every Catholic 
by our baptism is called to live in Christ, to live to be a saint. It is this reality that should be in the forefront of our mind. Think about our country alone. 25% of the United States, 25% of all the people in our country are Catholics. And if we don't even just look at Catholics, 70% claim to be Christian. What would our world like, look like if all of those people actively lived as Jesus calls us to live, especially in, in our sermon today, or I mean, our read gospel reading today? Just take the first line. It says, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. That radical message of love your enemy is being proclaimed in 17,000 parishes across our entire country. It's being proclaimed in 222,000 parishes across our world to 1.2 billion Catholics. I always wonder what other institution can do that much to proclaim love your enemies to all of those people. But then I ask, now how many will go home and in their prayer think, how can I personally love my enemy? How can I bring this central teaching of Christ into my life? Because this is one of those teachings that makes us different from everyone else. How can I live this? This year, our parish is working on renewing our parish. In order to renew our parish, we're asking every parishioner to look closely at their faith and to renew their personal faith because we will only have a strong community, a strong parish, if we have strong individual Christians. We've spent time looking at how important Mass is, how important it is to go to confession and to receive the sacraments. We spent a long period of time reflecting on how to do personal prayer because prayer is essential to knowing Jesus. We spent time looking at how important it is to financially support our parish because that is one of the precepts of the church. Now during Lent, we're going to start a new part of this renewal. Because another one of those elements that is essential to being uh, an active Christian is to be working on our life of holiness. We often forget that. We go to Mass, we come, out, we come home, but we should actually be thinking, how can I become holy? Think, think of our physical life. In our physical life, if we go to the doctor and you say, I'm not feeling very well, every good doctor will look at your lifestyle issues. What do you eat? Oh, I begin every day with a giant sack of pancakes with lots of syrup and bacon. I go to McDonald's for lunch and have pizza for supper. You get any exercise? No, I sit in front of a screen all day. Well, he's going to, the first thing he's going to do, if you want to be physically healthy, will say, we have to change some lifestyle issues. <coughs> if we don't, it'll be bad. However, we should also be concerned with our soul. For some reason, we don't often think of the health of our soul. We often fill it with garbage from movies and books and TV and the internet. We don't seem to exercise our soul at all with prayer and the scriptures. Our soul needs to receive that infusion of life of grace through the sacraments. Our soul needs us to work on holiness. Our soul actually needs to love others to fill our soul just as our body needs good food and exercise. Now, there are many different ways for us to look at our lives and train ourselves in holiness. The obvious one, Ten Commandments. 
We teach uh, in, our, in our religious ed in fourth grade, every, every child memorizes the Ten Commandments. I would hope that every person here has the Ten Commandments memorized. How can we live them if we don't know them? That's one way. We're just reflecting on the Ten Commandments on a regular basis. Another way to learn about holiness and practice it is using the works of mercy. Our church gives us those two lists, the spiritual works of mercy and the corporal works of mercy. The corporal works of mercy are those physical things, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, giving drink to the thirsty. The spiritual works are those internal ones, counseling the doubtful, comforting the sorrowful, forgiving others. Just get the list of the, of the corporal and spiritual works of mercy and ask yourself every day in your prayer, what's something I could do that, to do one of these works of mercy? Simple. It's a great way to practice your, your, your growing in holiness. During Lent, the way we're going to be doing it is we're going to be actually looking at the seven cardinal sins and then the virtues to heal those sins. So it's, it's a very common way. Get rid of the bad, bring in the good. That's the way we'll do it. However, today, we have a different way of looking at growing in holiness. Our gospel today uh, gives Jesus' moral vision on how to live our Christian life. It began last week when we read the Beatitudes. It continues this week, and will continue then the week after. It's called the Sermon on the Plain. That's the Luke's version of it. In St. Matthew, we call it the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus probably gave this sermon a whole bunch of times during his time preaching. In Matthew, it goes a lot farther in depth. It's chapters 5, 6, and 7 in the Gospel of Matthew. If you want to work on holiness, here's what I would do. I would encourage you to get the, the Sermon on the Mount. It's only three chapters. And use that. Every day, sit in your prayer chair and read a paragraph or two. You're not reading to get done. You're reading to pray with the passage. Read just a paragraph or two. Close the book. And then think. How do I apply this teaching to my life? How, how do I bring this into my relationships with my family, with my friends, with my community at large, and my workplace? After you do this every day and you read through all three chapters of the Sermon on the Mount, begin again. And again, ask, how can I make this teaching of Jesus a reality in my life? Let your mind go daydream. Daydreaming never hurt anyone. And think about all the great things you could do. And then every day, just make a small resolution of something that you could do from that passage. It could be as small as I'm going to compliment someone. I'm going to think well of someone. And then live that resolution. And then when you do that and you finish the, 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 the three chapters again, begin again. Every time you read it, you will get new insights. You will understand those teachings of Jesus. And eventually those teachings of Jesus will become your identity. When we look at the cardinal sins and, and, the, and the commandments and, and even, even uh, the, a lot of those things, they focus on my, me personally. How do I grow personally in holiness? The difference with the Sermon on the Mount is notice that almost the entire sermon is focused outwardly on others. It says, now that you've learned that virtuous life, how will you apply it to your relationships? Think about what, what, what we heard just today. We are to love our enemies. We are to pray for those who persecute us. We're not just to love humanity in general. You realize how easy it is just to love humanity? We're not being asked that. 
We're asked to love our enemies, those specific people, Bob at the office, Sally, my sister, those specific people in our lives. That is a lot harder to do. It's all about other people. It's about feeding those who are hungry, giving money to the person who needs it in their life. It's about doing to others what you would want them to do to you. It's about forgiving others and very specific people. Those in your life, you forgive them, not in general. In other words, what this sermon is doing, it's teaching us to love others as Jesus loves them. If our moral life is all about our relationships, then we actually have to have relationships. God made us for each other. He made us to spend time with our families, to spend time with our friends and those around us. We we read in Genesis that we were not created to be alone. So I'm going to encourage something that I I kind of doubt that you've ever heard a priest say in church. Invite people to your house and have lots of parties. Okay? Yeah, I'm I'm actually saying that. Invite people to your house. Have, uh, on a regular basis, have meals with your family, with other people. Growing up, my family had a tradition of every Sunday, we would go to both sets of grandparents and spend the whole day with family. And since all my cousins also had that tradition, we basically had a family reunion every weekend. My parents then throughout the, week, uh, uh, throughout the week had their, all their different clubs and VFW and dance groups. And then every weekend, one of the aunts and uncles on Friday and Saturday would have dinner and cards all night. It was a constant flow of people and a very large family. But learn who your neighbors are. Have cookouts. Get together regularly with the parents that you meet uh, from from your, your children's school or faith formation and get together with them for doing various things. Plan family trips with your family and others to the zoo, to Bay Beach, to go hiking. If our Christian moral life is based on having human relationship with others, then we actually have to have human relationships with others. We can't be sitting at our homes staring at screens by ourselves. Together with other people. You know what's going to happen? Some people are going to really bother you. You're going to disagree with lots of people because if you're with others, that's what happens. But in the end, every one of those relationships will give you a great opportunity to practice the virtues, to practice those skills that we have learned from Jesus. So today, simple message, grow in holiness, practice virtues, desire to be a saint, love others. But to do this, you actually have to know and spend time with others. Be the saint God created you to be. We are the disciples of Jesus Christ, so let us publicly profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day 
in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in the goodness and mercy of God, let us turn to him with our prayers and our petitions. For the church throughout the world, may God bestow <clears throat> unity among all her peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For political leaders, may the Lord assist them in working to promote peace among all nations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Luca Victor Scott DePoli, who was baptized yesterday, for his parents and godparents, that they may be faithful witnesses to the gospel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we consider our gifts to the bishop's appeal, may we remember God's generosity to us and consider giving back in gratitude. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those gathered here, may the Holy Spirit increase in us a spirit of conversion and openness to his work in our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Jim and Bobby Whitaker, for whom this Mass is offered, may they receive every good gift from the Father in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. God in heaven, come before us with these and all of our prayers. Grant them through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our offertory song is number 828 in the gather. Make me a channel of your peace. Make me a channel of your peace Where there is hatred, let me bring your love Where there is injury, your body in love And where there's judgment
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, our good and the good of all of us. As we celebrate your mysteries, O Lord, with the observance that is your due, we humbly ask you that what we offer to the honor of your majesty may profit us for salvation. Through Christ <clears throat> our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying... Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, everlasting resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, and David our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is Yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. A communion song is number 708 in the gather. Set your heart on the higher gifts. Let's 
We will now take up our second collection. And just a reminder, this is for that endowment for our education, which helps both those going to our school and our faith formation program. We want everyone to have good Catholic education no matter what their circumstance. Would those bringing communion to the homebound please come forward? You are being sent from this assembly to bring the Word of God and the bread of life to the sick and the homebound members of our parish family. We ask you to go to them with our love, with our care, and with our prayers. We do this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and gentle healer. Thank you all. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of salvation which is pledged to us by these mysteries. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to our closing song is number 803 in the gather for the healing of the nations. Oh.